question I'm going to ask um, is a very important question uh, for the record. So I would like for each of the witnesses uh, to answer it. And I know that each of you uh, represent a small business, uh, but you're representing also five different associations. And I would like to ask you the following. To date, the administration has allocated uh, nearly $38 billion to the domestic auto industry. How much of these resources, if any, are going to the small firms that supply the big manufacturers? Mr. Reed. I'd have to check for sure, but my, my opinion is in our area of machine tool manufacturing, I don't believe any dollars have gone in to our. Thank you. Mr. Smith. Um, it, although I, I do believe that uh, in, in General Motors' case that there are small suppliers that are signed up for the, um, uh, the either the early pay or the receivable protection program, uh, although it be somewhat few, uh, the reality is is that uh, most of those have not been, uh, f you know, the funding has not flowed really on, on any of that. Uh, and of the $38 billion, most of that went directly to the er original equipment manufacturers. And the set aside for the, uh, which was the $5 billion, uh, for the uh, the tier ones and and uh, in particular the the direct suppliers uh, that hasn't really uh, been effective at this point. Thank you, Mr. Overton. I'm not aware of. We represent primarily tier twos and tier three suppliers, so I'm not aware of any of that 38 billion dollar money that has trickled down to any of our members in either association, the National Tooling Machine Association, or the Precision Metal Forming Association. Mr. Jones. The surface finishing side, I only know of one surface finisher that does direct work with one of the big three, and he would be able to participate. All other surface finishers are in the Tier 3, Tier 4 level. Mr. Norch. Thank you. Um, as far as the record uh, to date from American Foundry Society, we've seen no money trickle down, and uh, on the contrary, receivables are still being pushed out anywhere from over 60 to as many as 120 days. So the effect is devastating right now. Thank you. Uh, to all of the witnesses, with the extended uh, shutdown at GM this summer and the lingering potential for another bankruptcy filing, clearly businesses like the one that you represent will be bracing for more difficult conditions. Could bridge financing programs or other types of short-term federal assistance help your members weather this storm? Mr. Reed. Yes, I would think that is a, that's an episode that we have to pursue. And, and I must caution that most small business people uh, don't necessarily want more regulation and in, in the government involved, but we're in a situation we don't have a choice. Okay, let me ask you this other question. <coughs> what size of loan will be necessary uh, to support businesses like yours through the downturn? What will be the average size? Um, tough question because we represent, there are some folks that I know are 17, 18, 20 million dollars in a hole. Uh, if you get down to the tier four or fives, uh, $500,000 would get someone through the next six months, which I think is the, that's the thing I think we should think about, getting everybody through for the next six months. Mr. Smith, you, you, for from from our, our <coughs> excuse me from our standpoint, the the issue is is that most most loans are based on receivables. There, quite frankly, aren't any receivables out there, and that's the issue. And the issue with the uh, uh, the, the crisis in the auto industry is isn't as as much as will my will my pre-petition bankruptcy amount get paid? It's it's what are we going to sell afterwards? And so. I would like to see a program that's really going to help us, uh, not on the downturn, but on the uh, hopefully the upturn. So when things turn around, you're going to do that from a base of no receivables. Uh, so you have no, you actually have no cash to go ahead and you know to buy new raw materials to fund uh, you know your inventory buildup and to start supplying. That's going to be the, the crisis for us. Mr. Overton. If uh, the GM bank or possibility of bankruptcy or shutdown is going to be devastating to our Tier 2 and Tier 3 members. Uh, we're already feeling it with Chrysler, but GM will be considerably, uh, uh, considerably worse than what the Chrysler uh, effect is going to have. Our, our issue as far as loans, uh, we're looking more to be paid for the uh, receivables we have out there right now. We've got receivables 
typically with the payment uh, practices of GM, Ford, and Chrysler, with the uh, uh, part approval process, we have receivables out there for six months to two years that are still several million dollars. If GM declares bankruptcy and being uh, unsecured creditors and all that money is lost, the, the effect on our, uh, our Tier 2 and Tier 3 members would be devastating. Okay, let me ask you, if, if, uh, if you knew, um, would your business be willing to pay a nominal premium for credit insurance or perhaps its receivables if you knew you would be paid in a timely manner and through a federal program or a financing facility? Absolutely. I think that's the answer. I think that's the cleanest, quickest answer if it's uh, comparable to what the Canadian government does with their, uh, their, their EDC program, the Export Division of Canada. Uh, they charge a 1 or 2 or 3 percent fee to insure those receivables. I think that's a queen, the cleanest, quickest. And, and if we need that to desperately happen before GM files bankruptcy to guarantee those outstanding receivables. Mr. Uh, Mr. Jones. Thank you. As we all know that cash flow is the lifeblood, life's blood of any small business. And as manufacturing opportunities are disappearing, then consequently that certainly affects the cash flow, whether it be with manufacturing through the big three or whether it be through other uh, support industries for the automotive. But certainly uh, any infusion of cash into the small businesses would certainly help them. Um, what would be the average size of a loan if, if you take that route? It's difficult for me to say the, finan the financial structure of all of the industries. In ours, when we're looking at about a less than 20 percent exposure on the automotive side, however, we are seeing opportunities that are disappearing and going out of the country and, and other sectors. Okay. Then hopefully with, we can start looking at some of the unfair trade practices and other issues that are affecting manufacturing to try to bring some manufacturing back into the country. Then somewhere in the neighborhood of probably a million dollars would. Okay. But would you agree with Mr. Overton's assessment that uh, paying a minimal premium for credit uh, insurance or perhaps uh, discount its receivable if you knew that you will be paid in a timely manner, that you yeah. will support that. Mr. Yes. Norge. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I agree with uh, the comments made by Mr. Overton, and I would like to add that it is difficult to assess the amount per each individual business based on what their leverage uh, or exposure is with the auto markets. Uh, and, and conjunction with what Mr. Jones stated, we do need to, as we're looking at propping up these tier two, three, and four businesses, we also need to look at, at really drastically reviewing those trade policies, bringing manufacturing back, but we also have other issues where we could create work for the industries that we're all here representing in the form of uh, technological advances and all of our services providing work for renewable energy sources, alternative energy sources, and all kinds of things that we can make in this country. That's what built this country, making, manufacturing things. And we have other avenues where we should be putting some time and effort into as well. And I think that will help prop up the, uh, the, the hit that a lot of these businesses are taking. We would have to diversify and, and maybe uh, uh, be a little creative. But again, that's what the ingenuity and in, in industrial sector is what built this country to begin with. And I think collectively we can work together to pull out of a lot of these sectors. Thank you, Mr. Norch. 